The idea of healing the earth is is pointless or empty if we can't heal ourselves first. I think the work starts from within, and only then can we change the world. You know, so many, so many environmental projects are talking about changing the world, but I think that if you don't start with this one, then it's it's an empty practice. There will be no point making the world a paradise, and yet inside people, it's still hell. You know, for so many people. Salt in the Forest is an indigenous reforestation project that seeks to restore the tropical dry evergreen forest that was here 200 years ago, which was cut back uh, by the British to grow military crops. Right now only less than 0.01% of the original tropical dry evergreen forest, which covered a lot of Tamil Nadu and even Sri Lanka, uh, only 0.01% of that remains. So. We're trying to uh, plant that, replant that. We plant uh, over 260 different species of tree here. So we're already able to see um, the ecosystem becoming alive again. And um, for example, the animals that used to live in this forest have started slowly coming back here. We have uh, many different uh, varieties of snake species. We even have porcupines coming and uh, and many frogs and lizards. So slowly, uh, the animals are coming back to this area, which is really nice to see. The Rosen family came here looking to practice their sadhana, um, and sadhana means spiritual path, uh, as you may know. So they wanted to practice their sadhana and practice their values, which they couldn't find uh, anywhere around Oroville, a community that practiced the values they were looking to practice. Um, so they decided to just start their own community, basically. Uh, at first it was just them, but after a few days, uh, another volunteer came and was interested in helping them. And since then, uh, we've had thousands of volunteers every year. Um, we have 5,000 visitors per year, one, about 1,000 volunteers per year, and um, a core of uh, long-term volunteers who decide to make it their seva or their kind of selfless service to help other people come and experience this space. So um, what is it that is drawing so many volunteers uh, to this space? I would say that it's the values that we practice here. One of our values is unity. So the idea that um, we want to include and support everybody and we don't want to discriminate on people based on um, their in individual differences or needs. So to have a space where you know everyone is welcome in this communal space and uh, children are, are treated to a large extent uh, as, as adults when, when it's relevant um, and uh, it, it just creates a feeling of unity. Um, another one of our values is uh, gift economy. So, as opposed to exchange economy, um, gift economy is where uh, we give for its own sake, not for um, any reason in terms of exchanging. So I want something, you have it, so I have to kind of convince you or give you a good enough price that I can get what I want. With gift economy, it's just a feeling of, I, I have an, a feeling of abundance. I have enough for myself and more than what I need. So if I share with you, it's not like I'm getting any less or I'm losing out. I can have the joy of, of sharing and then you can also get what you need. So ideas like that I think are so simple and yet um, just make a lot of sense. We, we don't want to eat a food, any food that is the result of violence. Uh, this includes, you know, any, not just any animal products, but any byproducts of animals, including milk, and cheese, paneer, even honey. Um, so we avoid these substances because we, we feel that it comes from the suffering of the animal. And when we consume that, we imbibe that suffering and it becomes part of our, our lives and our bodies as well and affects us in many ways. I was really inspired by this place. I don't think that there's anywhere else uh, like it I've never encountered. Uh, anywhere else and it really opened up my mind uh, when I first came even just for an, a tour of a couple of hours. 
I remember thinking that it made a lot of sense. When I first came here, my first thought was uh, I want to see um, a project which is working towards conservation goals, which is privately funded. You know, conservation goals are usually achieved by uh, big government funded programs, national parks, marine reserves, all these things. So I was okay. You know, I had a certain idea in my mind uh, of what I thought it might be like to stay here. You imagine yourself waking up and you imagine planting a tree or you imagine doing this or you imagine doing that. And I think one of the real offerings of a space like this, it's in things that will never be spoken to you. What's so surprising, uh, there are certain fundamental things which I think so many of us are so drawn to explore. Like collaboration, what it is to collaborate. We are so focused on competition in our normal lives. It's built into everything we've done from a very young age. The concept of reward and punishment supports an idea of competition, competing for rewards, avoiding um, suffering, avoiding punishment. There are so many exchanges which are possible where there is not one who wins and one who loses. We forget that in fact um, this kind of uh, communal opportunities for collaboration is something that we're accustomed to for most of our time as a species, most of our time evolving. We thrive through collaboration and we're very good at it when given the tools to do it. And most people, I think, will feel when they come here, they won't maybe know the words to describe it, but there'll be a feeling of, okay, there's something different in the space, something different about the intention, the idea of what's going on here. Uh, idealistic idea. I think that it's like an idealistic uh, utopia that we're living in and it's it's absolutely not the case. If anything it's it's the opposite. This place has more challenges that I've encountered because uh, it's a community so it's a very intense uh, environment in some ways. You know you can't really take a break from from it. You live here and you you are doing seva with other people here and you eat here I take them in the spirit of these challenges are for my growth. I think that's why I'm here, because if there's no challenge, then there's no point. You know, if life is easy, it's kind of boring, I think, uh, because you're not you're not learning, you know, you're not progressing. I think things would just stagnate, and uh, I would start questioning, you know, what's the point? So here, I feel like there's a lot of challenges, but there's a lot of feelings of overcoming those challenges too. Thank you.